Now, let's come back to East Africa. Kenya's newly formed space agency, in partnership with the Global Partnership for Sustainable Development Data, has announced plans to start monitoring drought conditions from space. The entities will join forces to uh, monitor, transmit and uh, essentially translate information gathered uh, from satellites up there into forecasts of growing conditions that could essentially be used to guide and plan for uh, food production. Now, the partnership is also going to offer a relatively powerful uh, approach to risk assessment that could be absolutely vital in securing affordable credit and crop insurance. A couple of other countries are involved in this program, Ghana, Tanzania, Senegal and Sierra Leone. So let's get your details on this. Dr. John Njoroga Kimani is the Acting Director General of the Kenya Space Agency. He's with me in studio tonight. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you very much. So last February, you indicated that agriculture was a priority matter for you. Um, as far as the value proposition for Kenyan-owned, Kenyan uh, Kenyan Kenyan-operated satellite uh, information was concerned, what's the value proposition that we're missing here? Like you said, uh, one of... Uh, the major concerns in Kenya is how we monitor agriculture. And uh, as a Kenya Space Agency, we are keen to make sure that uh, we use uh, satellite-based uh, agricultural monitoring mm -hmm. uh, to be able to uh, monitor our crops, to be able to monitor uh, pests, mm -hmm. to be able to monitor areas that require fertilizers so that we can improve the yields for our farmers. And we can also get pretty much real-time information from whatever satellites we have up there as well, can't we? Yes. In fact, uh, Kenya has had a long-standing relationship with uh, the Italian Space Agency. Mm. And uh, Kenya is lucky because we do have antennas that are collecting data 24 hours a day in Malindi. And uh, we have connected, courtesy of the Kenya Education Networks, we have connected the antennas in Malindi to our institutions of higher learning and other research institutions. And now, courtesy of the new initiative, mm -hmm. we are able to uh, get all of this uh, data, analyze it, and feed it to farmers uh, in a way that helps us to advise them so that they may know the type of fertilizers they need to use. And when to plant and so on. And, and so when forth. to plant. I'm, I'm glad you brought up the data question because I'm curious about the operational model. Once, once the data has been downloaded right mm. at the Broglio Space Center down in Malindi, mm. what happens next? What's, what's the chain of custody from the Space Center into the universities, who owns it, uh, what are the copyright issues around it? Because presumably there's an enormous cost in putting a satellite into space. So these services are not necessary, quote-unquote, free. Yes, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, the current state of affairs is that the majority of the data that we are using in Kenya is free data. Uh, whether somebody is paying for that data uh, the majority of the data we are using in the country right now is not paid for. Mm -hmm. And it's because we have had collaborations with very many uh, entities. And the first entity is the Italian Space Agency. Uh, the data that uh, we get from Malindi is uh, obtained by the Italian Space Agency. So the input that the Kenya government does is in analyzing the data. So would, it, would I be correct, and I know this might be a bit of a crude analogy, but would I be correct in saying that the, the data access is sort of their rent for having a facility here in East Africa? Yes, in, uh, to a big extent, to a large extent, uh, we have an agreement uh, between the two countries, and uh, what you are calling rent lire is uh, the provision because we are actually using their uh, space equipment mm -hmm. uh, to receive the data, so yes, you can call it the, the rent. It's a sort of quid pro quo, uh, isn't uh, it? Yes, yes. Okay, so the Broglio Spencer, uh, Space Center used to be called San Marco. It's been around for since 1964, You're as, right. I, as You're I recall. Right. You're right. But it's still owned by the Italian Space Agency. That's, that's not ours as Kenya, is it? Correct. So when are we building ours? Um, we have now established the Kenyan Space Agency. 
the Kenyan Space Agency was uh, inaugurated last year in the month of September. Now, uh, our first focus, the initial focus, is to make sure that we do not rely, like we have done in the, in the last 50 years, uh, on other people. So we will hit the ground running, making sure that uh, what happens in Malindi, and this is contained in the agreement that we have just negotiated, mm -hmm. what happens in Malindi is uh, done at equal uh, partner levels uh, between the Kenyan government and the Italian government. Right. Mm -hmm. there's, there's something else that I'm curious about, the, the private sector element mm -hmm. in the space business, because we've seen for the most part in the last five years or so, it's been companies like SpaceX, mm -hmm. Blue Origin, and so on and so forth, who've really pushed forward the cost of getting payloads into orbit. They made mm -hmm. it easier for people to access space. Correct. Correct. And Kenya is in this really advantageous geographical location. We're three degrees south of the equator. You mm -hmm. need a lot less fuel to get a payload into high orbit. But where's the private sector coming into this? If I want to come to you and say, okay, I'd like to set up a space launch facility in Malindi, mm -hmm. what next? How do I go about it? Yes, uh, as we speak, we have had already very many private people showing a lot of interest in doing a number of things. Uh, I think what is uh, most selling around Kenya, Kenya, uh, like you said, is adv has a geographic advantage because we are along the equator. Uh, so anybody who wants to uh, send a satellite, an equatorial satellite, uh, would benefit to launch from Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, more people uh, getting interested in having experiments and uh, being involved in the International Space mm -hmm. Station. And uh, if we had a spaceport in Kenya, because of our elevations, especially around the northern uh, part of Kenya. Mm -hmm. We would have very, very cheap launches mm -hmm. made from uh, Kenya. So one of the first things that we are trying to uh, discuss with various international partners is to see how we can have uh, space ports developed in one of our elevated regions in Kenya. All right, so unfortunately we'll have to leave you there. Otherwise we'd stay here all day talking about payload costs and getting them into orbit. But Dr. Njorogi Kimani, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.